Hi, I'm Terry from PokerRailbird.com, and welcome to the first video in our Poker Math series. Over the course of the series, we'll be covering everything from the basic probabilities of being dealt certain hands, all the way to advanced concepts like hand equity and game theory optimal strategies. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned player, understanding the math behind poker is crucial to becoming a winning player. In this first video, we'll focus on preflop probabilities, how likely it is to be dealt certain hands like ace-king or pocket pairs, and how you can use that knowledge to improve your game from the start. Let's dive in. Throughout this video series, we'll be talking a lot about both probabilities and odds. Some players relate best to probabilities, understanding things in percentages, while others are more comfortable working with odds. Personally, I use both, depending on what I'm discussing. Before we dive into the details, I want to make sure everyone is familiar with how to convert between probabilities and odds easily, so we're all on the same page moving forward. Let's pick a quick example. To convert a probability to odds, you use the following formula. Odds equal probability divided by 1 minus the probability. Let's break that down. The numerator is simply the probability of the event happening, and the denominator is the probability of the event not happening. For example, if you have a 25% chance of hitting a hand, the probability of not hitting it is 75%. The formula would be 25% divided by 75%, or 3 to 1 odds. If you would like to see further examples, check out our article, Pot Odds and Hand Probabilities, at PokerRailbird.com. Let's talk about the math behind the probability of being dealt specific hands preflop. Understanding how likely you are to get specific hands helps you make better decisions at the table. It may seem that you are dealt certain hands more often than other hands. That's because you are. Let's take a look at why that is. Take Ace-King as an example, a famous starting hand. There are 16 total combinations of Ace-King, 4 Aces, and 4 Kings. However, 4 of these combinations are suited one for each suit, so we must deduct those, leaving us with 12 off-suit combinations. The probability of being dealt ace-king suited is 0.3%, or about once every 331 hands. For ace-king off-suit, the probability is 0.9%, or about once every 110 hands. When you combine the two, the probability of being dealt any ace-king suited or off-suit is 1.2%, or about once every 83 hands. Pocket pairs work a bit differently. You have six possible combinations of cards of the same rank to make a pocket pair. The probability of being dealt any random pocket pair is 6% or once every 16 hands. The probability of being dealt any specific pocket pair, such as pocket sevens, is 0.45% or once every 221 hands. What about suited hands? The probability of being dealt two suited cards is about 23.5%. This is important for hands with drawing potential and plays a key role in deciding whether to play speculative hands like suited connectors. For example, if your starting hand is ASEX suited, which you have a 4% chance of being dealt, the odds of flopping a flush are 118 to 1. From preflop to river, you have a 4.67% chance, or 21.4 to 1 odds, of making a flush by the time all five community cards are dealt. Additionally, if you're holding two cards of the same suit in a nine-handed game, there's about a 30.6% chance that at least one of the other players is also holding two cards of your suit. This possibility impacts your decisions, especially in multi-way pots where drawing potential and suit domination come into play. The rank of your two suited cards, such as holding ASEX suited or low suited connectors, must also impact your decisions if you get a favorable flock. If you make a flush, having the ace of your suit gives you the nut flush, which guarantees that no opponent can beat your hand with a higher flush. However, if you hold lower ranked suited cards, such as the 9, 8, you must be cautious even when you hit a flush. There's a significant risk that another player could hold two higher cards of your suit and outdraw you with a higher flush. The relative strength of your cards becomes crucial in these situations. With low suited cards, you're more vulnerable to domination by higher flushes, which should influence how aggressively you play your hand even after hitting a favorable flop. How about straight draws? 
you'll be dealt cards that are not suited, but have the potential to make a straight 41% of the time. However, straight draws are more complex than other types of hands, and here's why. There are four main categories of straight draws, connectors, one gap, two gap, and three gap. Within each of these categories, there are three subcategories based on the position of the cards, at the end, near the end, and in the middle. Let's break it down using connectors as an example. Take a hand like Ace-King. These cards are connected, but they're at the end of the straight spectrum. This means you can only make a straight in one direction, requiring a board of Queen-Jack-10. With Ace-King, the odds of making a straight are about 3%, or 32.33 to 1 odds. Next, we have hands that are near the end, such as King-Queen. These cards can make a straight in two directions, Ace-Jack-10 or Jack-10-9. The odds of making a straight with King-Queen are about 5%, or 19 to 1 odds. Finally, the best straight draws come from middle connectors like Jack-10. These hands offer four possible ways to complete a straight, compared to the two ways for near-the-end hands and just one way for end-of-the-spectrum hands. Middle connectors like Jack-10 have about a 9% chance of making a straight, or 10.11 to 1 odds, from preflop to river. It's important to note that hands like Ace-King or King-Queen are often played more for their high card value and kicker strength than for their straight draw potential. Let's take a look at one-gap straight draws, like Ace-Queen or Queen-10. Just like with connectors, middle one-gap hands offer better potential than those at or near the end of the straight spectrum. For instance, Queen-10 has a 7% chance of making a straight, or 13.29 to 1 odds, while Ace-Queen has only a 4% chance, or 24 to 1 odds. Moving on to two-gap straight draws, these are hands like Ace-Jack, which also has a 4% chance of making a straight, with odds of 24 to 1. A more favorable example is Queen-9, a middle two-gap hand, which has a 6% chance of making a straight, or 15.67 to 1 odds. When we get to three gap hands, these are generally not advisable to play if you're hoping to make a straight, as the probabilities are quite low. For example, Ace 10 has just a 4% chance, or 24 to 1 odds, and a hand like Queen 8 falls into a similar range. While some of these hands might be played for their high card value, they often come with a weak kicker, making them less attractive overall. Again, keep in mind that all the hand probabilities that we have stated here, are based on the probabilities and odds of completion from preflop to river. As we all know, our hands become much more defined after the flop. While straight draws can be enticing, especially when you hold no gap or one gap connectors, they carry significant risks from a preflop to river perspective. The odds of completing a straight by the river are relatively low, generally falling between 10% to 15%, depending on your starting hand. This makes chasing straights a gamble unless the pot odds justify the risk. Another danger to consider is that even when you do hit a straight, or a strong draw, you need to be cautious about which end of the straight you hold. If you hit the lower end of the straight, such as holding 7-6 on a 9-8-5 board, the very same cards that completed your straight could easily give another player a higher ranking open-ended straight draw, who may be holding hands such as Jack-10. This potential for being outrun means you should tread carefully, especially in multi-way pots, and pay close attention to the board cards. Always be aware of the possibility that someone could have a higher straight, and don't overcommit to the pot unless you're confident in your position. That's a quick overview of the probabilities for getting certain hands preflop. Understanding these numbers can help you make more informed decisions before the flop, laying the foundation for a stronger overall strategy. In the next video, we'll dive into pot odds and how to calculate the profitability of your calls, so be sure not to miss it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe for more poker strategy insights. And don't forget to check out the quiz at pokerrailbird.com to test your knowledge and sharpen your skills. I have placed the link in the video description below. As always, good luck to everyone and we'll see you at the tables.